blessing shall thou be in the city, and blessing shall thou be in the field. That means the location will not matter. The location will not matter. In the city, you'll be blessed. In the field, you will be blessed. You'll be blessed. Blessing coming is a result of obedience. Obedience. That's breakthrough. Breakthrough. Great breakthrough in life. Look at Peter. A professional fisherman. He had gone fishing all night. In the morning, he had caught nothing. Not even the omena. He had caught nothing. And Jesus appeared in the morning and told him, I need to use your boat. He gave Jesus to use the boat to minister from. And after he had used the boat, Jesus told Peter, launch your net to the deep. Launch. Peter said, I have tried all night through. I've gotten nothing. Never delays at thy word. Someone shout obedience. Never delays at thy word. I will release. I will launch the net for a catch. What happened? He caught a net breaking. Boat sinking catch. That net caught so much fish that he had to beckon his friend to come. They filled two boats with the fish until the two boats began to sink as a result of what? Obedience. Say with me, obedience. He chose to obey the voice of God. I challenge you in the name of Jesus Christ. Purpose from today to obey the Lord to the latter. To obey the voice. To obey the commandment of God. And you will see what the Lord will do with your life. I remember this ministry. We were in town. Few people, about 35 people. Be sitting there. Pray, ministry, pray. I was even going out to do so winning. I've done so winning in town. Around Con can you come there. Hilton there. The, the people idling there. I go and minister. I've ministered to them. The church was home growing. Very few people. Who don't get this for a conference. Maybe and I've invited a preacher and guest minister. Maybe two or three people have come for the conference. Now what will you tell the preacher? He will think you are not serious. How can you call him for a conference <laughs> for two or three people? He will think you are not serious. And as I was praying, fasting, asking God, what shall we do? The Lord told me, now relocate to his lands. That's the voice I had. Relocate this ministry to his lands. And I chose, was of course, a committee there. And they said, now begin to plan. We are to relocate to his lands. And they gave them some months. They sat every Sunday planning, planning, planning. By the end of the day, they came to tell me, man of God, it's not possible for us to move. But before they told me, uh, the Spirit of God sensitized to me. So before the end of the service, I told them, today is the last Sunday to worship from here. We shall be meeting at Umoja <laughs> next Sunday. So they could not tell me their conclusion. And that's how we landed here. Shout with me, obedience. Purpose from where you are to obey the voice of God. And you will see what would happen with your life. Number two benefit is and defensement in life. Let me put it this way. It's ob obedience is your master key to your lifting and, and defensement in life. Obedience is your master key. Obedience is your master key to lifting and, and defensement in life. It is the master key. Do you want to be lifted in life? Then you need a master key. Hear me? A master key will open many doors. That's why we are calling it a master key. It will open many doors in your life. There are doors in your life you will open by this master key, using this master key. There are many doors in your life. Maybe it's your career, your business, your marital destiny. You can open it. You can unlock that door using this master key called obedience. Jeremiah chapter 7. Let's go there. Verse 23. But this thing commanded I them, saying, Obey my voice, and I will be your God. 
And you shall be my people. Now, let's just pause for a minute. Does it mean God was not your God? No. God was their God because God is speaking to the children of Israel. And he said, obey my voice and I will be your God. That means he will pay more attention to you. He will reveal himself to you. That's what you mean. You have been praying and you are not seeing God at work. He says, obey my voice and I will pay attention to you. I will be your God. Yes, he has been your God, but he wants to give you more attention. Have you heard? There are people, the Bible says, before you pray, I shall answer. Before you call on me, I mean before you cry, I shall tell you here I am. That means he has given them more attention than others. Others are crying more, more for him to answer. Others, before they pray, he has already answered. Before they cry, he has already revealed himself. He will be their God. That means he will show them more attention than they have before. Mm -hmm. He says, and you shall be my people, and you are God. And you shall, be, uh, you shall be my people. And walk ye in all the ways that I have commanded you, that it may be well unto you. Hear what the Lord is saying. And walk ye in all the ways that I have commanded you, that it may be well with you. That means God demanded obedience. Verse 24. But they hearkened not, nor inclined their hear, but walked in their counsels, and in the imagination of their evil art. And they went backward and not forward. What happened with them? They went backward and not forward. That means obedience will make your life move forward. Disobedience will cause you to move backward. Disobedience will make you move backward. But obedience will make you move forward. That's why I'm saying obedience is a master key for your advancement. It's a master key. It's a master key in your life. It's a master key. So when you obey the Lord, your life will move forward. When you disobey, you move backward. The choice is yours. Choose to obey the voice of God. To obey the commandment of God. And you will move forward. Number three. Obedience destroys opposition and all the undermined challenges of life. Obedience destroys opposition. And all the undermined challenges of life. In the book of 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. I'll read verse number 6. And having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience. When your obedience is fulfilled. And having in a readiness to revenge. That's what to revenge means. To punish. Having in a readiness to punish disobedience. You can punish disobedience. You can vindicate yourself. To vindicate yourself. But it's only when your obedience is fulfilled. Until you have fulfilled your obedience, you are not permitted to punish whatever has disobeyed you. Having in a readiness to punish all disobedience. When you are, your obedience is fulfilled. You can punish disobedience. There are things you know you have done what the scripture is saying but still there are some things that are disobeyed. When are you supposed to cause them to obey you? You can cause them to obey you when your obedience is fulfilled. When your obedience is fulfilled. When your obedience is fulfilled. Your obedience determines whether God will speak more or not. <laughs> That's another benefit. Eh? Your decree of obedience, your level of obedience determines whether God will speak more or not. Now, God has been speaking to you in the public and you have not been obeying what he spoke in the public. Eh? What will you provoke him to speak to you in, 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 in the private? What will prove to him that you will obey what he will speak to you in secret? If you have disobeyed what he spoke to you publicly, why should he keep on speaking to you and you have not obeyed what he spoke to you yesterday? 
Why should he speak to you today and you have not obeyed what he spoke to you yesterday? What? Why should he speak to you today? So when you obey, you provoke God to speak to you more. You provoke God to reveal his secrets to you. And you remember, you need divine direction in life. And God is ready to give you divine direction. You need God to guide you. He will guide you through his voice. He will guide you through his word. He will reveal things to you. How will he guide you if you have not been obeyed what he spoke to you yesterday? Because today you need some direction. But you disobeyed his voice yesterday. Why should he speak to you again and you disobeyed yesterday? Obey what he has spoken to you. Many of you, you know what God has spoken to you, but you still have ardent your heart. The Bible says, when you hear the voice of God, do not ardent your heart. Ardent not your heart. God has been speaking to you. Open your heart to obey the voice of God. Look at Abraham. God could not hide anything to Abraham in Genesis 18. Verse 17. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? Shall I hide? Shall I? God is, is being, there is something pushing God to speak. Will I not tell Abraham? Will I not reveal to him? Will I not speak to him? Will I hide from Abraham the thing which I am about to do? Verse, verse 18. Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. Verse 19. For I know him that he will command his children and his household after him. And they shall keep the way of the Lord. They shall obey. That's what, what God is saying. They shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment. That the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he had spoken of him. I know Abraham. That he will not only obey my voice, he will also command his children to obey my voice. So will I hide. Will I hide knowing this man will surely do what I will tell him. Will I hide to tell him what I'm going to do? Will I hide? God is being pushed by something inside. By the obedience of Abraham to tell him. Your obedience to the voice of God will provoke him to reveal to you deeper things. Someone say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. How should you obey? Very fast. How should you obey? Number one, you need what you call fulfilled obedience. Say with me, fulfilled obedience. Where we have read 2 Corinthians, verse 10, verse number 6. And having readiness to punish all disobedience. When your obedience is fulfilled having readiness to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled not halfway obedience but full obedience fulfilled obedience obeying god to the latter number two the lord is demanding qualitative obedience say with me qualitative obedience qualitative obedience means quality obedience Quality obedience. You are ready to obey God. And not just obey God. You obey him excitedly. Obey him rejoicingly. Obey him rejoicing. Even if it is a hard task. Because God can never command you to do what you cannot do. What you are not able to do. God is not a wicked God. He's a loving father. He's not a taskmaster. He will tell you to do what he knows you can do. Someone say, I will obey his voice. One more time. One brother... was told by the Lord give out this car give out this car Ah, according to him was telling me there was something pushing him to give out that car immediately gave out that car after, after a short while that car would have caused a very deadly accident now they escaped the first time the second time that car crashed. On the spot, it killed how many people? Two. Other people were seriously injured in that car. This brother, when I, I talked to him, he told me, a ah, man of God, I felt a very strong push to give out this car. 
Maybe if he, have, he would have refused giving out that car, it would have become his casket. It would have become his coffin. But he obeyed what? The voice of God. He never hesitated. Now, when, when he was telling me, he was, he was thanking God that he was able to obey the voice of God. Maybe God saw what the enemy had dropped in that car. And God wanted to save this man and he told him, give out. And he just obeyed. He didn't know why. And he gave out to be left without a car. Only to realize later, not that time, later. He didn't know even why he was giving out the car. Only to realize later, the Lord was exempting him from a trap of death. May you obey the voice of God. I'm saying may you obey the voice of God. A brother was here. And he was called by his aunt to go at work. I mean, just to, to stand for her uh, in a hardware at Mulolongo. A hand has a hardware in Mulolongo. And uh, he, he called his brother. And when the brother was about to go, one of my pastors told him, don't go. There's no reason. He's not giving me a reason as to why he should not go. But the pastor told him, don't go. And the brother just obeyed. He never went. Now, if he would have gone that weekend, that building where his aunt was working at the hardware, that building collapsed and they killed everybody inside. Someone shout obedience. Tell me obedience. Just by obeying that voice, that brother was exempted from what would have happened. You need to be sensitive to obey the voice of God. And obey him, fulfilled obedience, qualitative obedience. And number three, obey him promptly. Say with me, promptly. To obey promptly means immediately. Obey him immediately. God told Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, verse number one. He called Abraham and told him, I'll bless you until you become a blessing. Come out of your father's house and go to a land that I will show you. Verse number four, the Bible says, And Abraham departed as the Lord has commanded him. Not just now, but he commanded as the Lord had commanded. He departed. He departed. In Genesis chapter 17, God appeared to Abraham. And said, I want to enter into a covenant with you. Please, the token, the sign of the covenant shall be circumcision. Circumcise yourself, every male person in your house. And the Bible says, the same day, the same day, Genesis 17, the same day, Abraham circumcised himself, circumcised Ishmael, and all the male servants in his house. The same day. In Genesis 22, God appeared to Abraham and told him, now you have your son Isaac, your only son whom you love. Now take him and go to Mount Moria and sacrifice him there. And the Bible says the following day. Say what I mean? The following day. That's prompt obedience. The following day. Prompt obedience. Very key. Very important. Obedience. 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 Obe what is he saying? God is not just after your obedience. But they need prompt obedience. Someone say, thank you, Jesus. I want to finish by saying, to obey is not easy. Why am I saying it's not easy? How comes, you know, if I do this thing, God will bless me, and yet you disobey? He told the children of Israel, do this in Jeremiah chapter 7. Obey my voice, and I will be your God. And the Bible says, they can't not. And the Bible says, instead of going forward, they went backward. They knew what God had commanded, how they would benefit. You know if you obey God, you will benefit. But you find you are, not, you are not obeying. Why? It is not easy. It is not easy. To obey God is not easy. So what are you supposed to do? Number one, you need to purpose. Say with me, I have decided. One more time. There's a song we used to sing. I've decided to follow Jesus. <laughs> Amen. No turning back. So number one, you have to decide. Now let's check Ezekiel 36. 
Ezekiel 36, verse 26. A new heart also will I give you. Say with me, go ahead, Lord. And a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. And I will give you an heart of flesh. Because, you know, stone is very hard. <laughs> but at least flesh is malleable. Stone is very hard, very hard. A rocky heart. The Lord has to take it away. That, that stony heart, the Lord has to take it away and give you a, a heart of flesh. Verse 27. And I will put my spirit within you. Say with me, spirit of obedience. And cause you to walk in my statutes. That means... I will put my spirit within you and that spirit will cause you. You have to be enabled and will cause you to walk in my statutes and you shall keep my judgment and do them. Verse 29. And you shall dwell in the land that I, have, I gave to your fathers and you shall be my people and I will be your God. Verse 29. And I will so save you from all your uncleanness, and I will call for the corn and will, will increase it and lay no famine upon you. First 30. And I will multiply the fruit of the tree and the increase of the field, that you shall receive no more reproach or famine among the hidden. Someone shout blessing. Now the Lord is saying, I will take away the stony heart and I will put the heart of flesh. Stone, I've said, is synonymous to hardness. A stone is very hard. But flesh is malleable. It is, can be molded. Your flesh can be molded. So the Lord will take away that stony, that hard heart. And he will put in you a new heart. And he says, number two, and I will put my spirit within you. Say the spirit of God. Now that spirit is the spirit of obedience. Now if there is a spirit of disobedience, then there must be the spirit of obedience. Are we together? Are you aware of the spirit of disobedience? In Ephesians chapter 2, check there. Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 1, the Bible says, And you had he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Check that. Wherein in time past, verse 2, you walked according to the prince of the power of the hair. That's devil. The spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. So if there is a spirit of disobedience, there is also the spirit of obedience. The spirit of obedience. And he says, I will put my spirit within you. And he will cause you to walk in my statutes. He will enable you to obey me. He will cause you to walk, to walk in my ways. Say with me, Lord, pour the spirit of obedience upon me. Are we together? You need that. You need the spirit of, number no, one no, I said, for you to obey, you need to decide to obey the voice of God. And that's why we say, I have decided. Number two, you need the spirit of obedience to obey. You know tithing is good, but you find yourself, tithe is sweeter than the rest of the money. You will find yourself eating your tithe. It is disobedience. That means you need the spirit of obedience. Say with me, obedience. Are we together? Mm, obedience, 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 obedience to the voice of God. Obedience, obedience. Mm. Unakuta mtu, ameokoka, unaita mke wako majina. Hai. Kama unamuita umbwa, si inamanisha wewe ndiye umbwa ile mume. Amen. Ngombe. Condo. Say the manager when he condo ingi, he condo bembe. That's what you need to. Someone say obedience. Obedience to the voice of God. Now you must obey God, and number two, obey His servants. Obey God and obey His servants. 
obey God, the voice of God, obey his commandment, and obey his servants. The Bible says, Ephesians chapter 6, children, obey your parents in the Lord. Honor your father and mother that it may be well with you. You honor your parents. You obey your parents in the Lord. You obey your parents in the Lord. Honor your father and mother. Read for me, someone read for me, Hebrew 13, verse 17. Hebrew 13, verse 17. Read for me. Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves for they watch for your souls. For they watch over your souls. Uh-huh. As they that must give account. As they that must give account. Say so what do you mean? Give account. It's not an easy thing. Oh, hey. Imagine Mbele Ababa Nisimame Apo, Nanyi Mwanza Kupita Niketo account Yakila Moja Wen. Jesus gave account of his church. His church had 12 people. And he said, Father, in John chapter 17, Father, them that you gave me, none has gotten lost except one, the son of perdition, that the scripture may be fulfilled. He gave account. Viewers, we thank God you have been watching. Well, are you born again? If not, you need Jesus into your life. You cannot benefit from this blessing except you first receive Jesus, who is the source of blessing. Please pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus. I come to you. I repent of my sins. I welcome you into my life. Take over in my life. I know now that I am forgiven. I'm a child of destiny. I am born again. Amen. By that prayer, you are now born again, a child of destiny. Please welcome and worship with us at GLCC. Omoja in a call. If you're in Nairobi, please welcome and worship with us. First service is in the, I mean, in the morning, 8 a.m. every Sunday, come and worship with us. Second service, 10.30, English interpreted in Swahili. The Lord bless you. The Lord increase you. Peace of God. Amen.